Hello, my name's Gabe and it's time for another Hawkeye Tech Tutorial. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to install a glue-in transducer. This transducer is suitable for vessels with the following hull types. High-speed boats to increase the performance of the depth sounder, trailer boats to prevent accidental damage to the transducer from trailering, shallow draft boats to prevent accidental damage to the transducer from intentional or unintentional ground, non-cored hulls, or aluminum holes thinner than one eighth of an inch. Inboard vessels have a lot of running gear that creates significant acoustic noise and water turbulence. If you think that this transducer is not suitable for your vessel, contact us by phone, email, or at our website and we'll be happy to review your installation plan and offer suggestions for alternative transducer options. The tools required for this type of installation are plastic bag, petroleum jelly, 30 grit sandpaper, a two-part slow cure epoxy and tie wraps. The most important thing to keep in mind is that transducers can only be glued inside holes that are solid fiberglass or up to an eighth inch aluminum. However, since boat holes absorb acoustic energy, transmitting through the hole reduces the transducer's performance. It's important to note that fiberglass holes are often reinforced in places for added strength. These cord areas contain wood or structural foam which are poor sound conductors. To achieve optimal performance, find a location where the hole's laminate is solid fiberglass and not cord. Let's begin by establishing a baseline for the depth finder readings. Anchor or moor the vessel in a body of water away from other boat traffic. Make sure you turn off all other sonar devices on your boat and locate the vessel at least 50 feet from the nearest vessel. Now. Plug the transducer cable into the back of the depth sounder display and turn the display on. Once the display is turned on, it will display the test sequence and then display three dashes. Place the transducer close to your ear. If the transducer is properly connected, it will be emitting a ticking sound, similar to a wristwatch. If you do not hear this ticking sound, recheck your connections or visit our customer service center for advanced troubleshooting. Before proceeding, make sure the keel offset feature is turned off. If it's on, the KO icon will be illuminated on the depth finder display. You will need to set the kill offset to zero. Now hold the transducer over the side of the vessel so that it's the same distance below the water surface as it would be in the hole mounting location. Note the depth that is being displayed on the depth sounder. Remove the transducer from the water and proceed to testing the depth readings with the transducer at the desired in-hole location. The first thing we need to do is find a proper location for the transducer. There are three methods that we can use to test that location. The first method is the plastic bag method. If the whole surface is not smooth, sand it with 30 grit sandpaper until a smooth surface is obtained. Partially fill a thin plastic bag with water. Place the transducer inside and close it tightly with a tie wrap. Wet the surface of the hole and press the transducer face against the hole through the bag and check the depth reading on the display. The second method is to set it in the bilge water. If the transducer will be located in an area of the hole that holds water, place the transducer against the hole and allow bilge water to cover the surface where the transducer touches the hole. Now check the depth reading on the display. The third method is petroleum jelly. If the whole surface is not smooth, sand it with 30 grit sandpaper until a smooth surface is obtained, coat the face of the transducer with petroleum jelly and press it against the hole with a twisting motion. Use duct tape to hold it in place. Now check the depth reading on the display. Now that you have the transducer temporarily affixed to the hole, it's time to take the vessel for a test drive. Before heading out, make sure the display is functioning properly and familiarize yourself with the operation of the display. Now remove the vessel from its mooring and operate it at idle speeds while getting to know the functions and performance of the depth sounder. Now gradually increase the boat speed and observe the depth readings. Make sure you stay in water between two and a half and 200 foot deep. If three dash readings appear, put the vessel in a slow turn. If the dash readings disappear when turning, the transducer's position probably needs adjustment because it is in aerated water. If the three dash readings do not disappear while turning, relocate the transducer using one of the previous test methods. If following the bilge water test method, Make sure that your three dash readings are not caused by the bilge water flowing away from the transducer face while turning, accelerating, or decelerating. If you're happy with the performance of the depth finder, 
Then mark the area with a pencil or marker and proceed to gluing in the transducer. Do not proceed to the next step until you are satisfied with the readings. If you have difficulties, please visit our customer service center or our website or call 888-667-2767 for technical assistance. If during these tests three dash readings constantly appear, then the transducer cannot be mounted inside your hole. Follow the instructions for transom mounting the transducer or contact us and ask about exchanging your transducer for one that is more suitable for your vessel. If during these tests three dash readings randomly appear or the readings are noticeably different from the depth displayed when the transducer was hung over the side of the boat, you will probably need to find another location using the three methods described previously. If the readings are satisfactory, mark the spot in the hole and proceed. To fix the transducer to the hole, use only a two-part slow cure epoxy. Never use any adhesives or glue that is not two-part slow cure epoxy, such as silicone sealant, weather sealants, rubbery caulks, construction adhesives, five-minute or quick cure epoxies, rubber cements or 3M's 4200 or 5200 adhesive sealants. Start by prepping the mounting location. All surfaces to be bonded must be smooth, clean, and dry. If the whole surface is not smooth, sand it with 30 grit sandpaper until a smooth surface is obtained in an area a little larger in diameter than the length of the transducer. First you want to clean and dry both the selected area and the face of the transducer with a weak solvent to remove any dust, grease, or oil. Next, prepare the adhesive as per the directions supplied with the adhesive. Do not mix the epoxy on the transducer. Next, you want to apply the mixed epoxy to both the entire face of the transducer and the inside of the hole. Press the transducer face onto the hole with a twisting motion to expel all the air bubbles. If the hole is slanted, temporarily secure the transducer in place with duct tape. Allow the adhesive to cure as per the manufacturer's instructions. Finally, route the cable to the display mounting location and connect it to the display. After the epoxy is dried per the manufacturer's recommendation, take the vessel for a ride. If you're not happy with the readings, there are very little adjustments you can do at this time. You will need to remove the transducer and return to step one of the glue-in instructions. If you need to remove the transducer, place a piece of wood against the base of the transducer. Gently tap the piece of wood with a hammer. Do not strike the transducer directly. Once the transducer is removed from the hole, sand the excess epoxy adhesive off with sandpaper. Do not use chemicals to remove the excess epoxy. If you are not happy with the on-water performance of your depth sounder, we're here to help. Rest assured that this depth sounder is engineered to the highest standards and is part of the best-selling family of depth sounders in the world. It is highly likely that your dissatisfaction is due to improper installation. Nine times out of ten, performance issues are the result of improper installation of the transducer. I cannot stress enough, the transducer must be mounted so that it has an uninterrupted supply of clean, aeration-free water. If the depth finder gives accurate readings while the vessel is sitting still, but changes to dash lines while the vessel is moving, it is almost always the result of aeration to the transducer face. In this case, you should review the transducer installation guide and adjust the transducer as suggested. Thanks again for purchasing a Hawkeye Depth Finder. Here at Norcross Marine Products, we strive for 100% customer satisfaction. If you have a problem with your depth sounder, first review the operator's manual, then rewatch this video. If you can't find a solution to the problem, feel free to call us at 888-7-NORCROSS during normal business hours. 24-hour technical support is available online at hawkeyeelectronics.com where you can search our online knowledge base for the latest troubleshooting and FAQs or post your own question for our support staff. For one-on-one -on -one support, please email support at norcrossmarine.com. Now get out there and enjoy your freedom.